Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. We are back on Savage Jane again. Um, and today's uh, today's going to be a big video, quite a long one. I might end up splitting into part one and part two. Because today um, we get to service the engines. So I never did them last year because they were done in 2020 when I bought the boat. Didn't put many hours on it, so I didn't do them last year. Um, this year, obviously, we have put quite a lot more hours on it. So, you know, we, we're going to uh, do them before this next season. So, I've got a load of stuff. I'll run through what I've got and then we'll uh, get straight into it. So, come over here, we have some kitchen roll because you always spill. Some towels because there's a bit of water in the bilge, so I'm just going to quickly vacuum that out and then use that. Um, now, you'll notice that none of these are Volvo Penta parts. These are all equivalents um, at a fraction of a cost. I'll run through why in a second. So, these are the crankcase filters that go at the back of the engine. The old ones just pull off and these push on. So these should be a, a 10 second change. So it's these, you'll have seen them in the video. And if you look, the old ones just push, pull off, push on. So 10 seconds to change those crankcase filters. Two of them, two engines. These are secondary fuel filters. So these are the fuel filters that go on the engine. Uh, what I don't have here is primary fuel filters because I forgot to buy some. Um, but these are secondary fuel filters for the engines. Uh, and again, two of two of them, one for each engine. Uh, these are air filters for the air boxes. Um, and again, two of them. I'm not going to take them out because, yeah, well, I can do. But I'm sure you've all seen a, an air filter before. Just a bit of foam. So again, two seconds pull the old one out, push a new one in. And then these are oil filters. Now I've got four of these. Um, so I'm gonna use two. I'm gonna keep two for spares on the boat. I need to order some spare secondary fuel filters as well. You don't need spares of crankcase breathers and you don't need spares of air filters um, because if you get a clog, you can just take it out and run without one. Um, but I am going to vacuum out the old ones and probably keep those as spares anyway. Um, because it's a boat, we don't have a sump. So instead of a manual oil pump, I've got an automated oil pump. You feed this down with dipstick all the way to the bottom and the oil comes out there into my lovely clean oil drum. Here we've got replacement oil. Now again, I'm not using Volvo Penta oil because it's ridiculously priced. These, this is uh, man oil branded, but it's to the same specification. So perfectly good to use. Um, We've got some coolant in the engine bay, but obviously I'm going to need to tap, top up that starboard coolant. Um, I've got some bags. Now, you'll probably see why I use these later for the oil filters. But basically, the oil, oil filter sits inside one of these bags. So to avoid drips, you put the bag over the oil filter, then you unscrew the oil filter, any drips go straight into the bag. So I've got some bags got a funnel to help me top up some coolant without spilling it everywhere. Um, rather than pull the oil out of this big 25 litre drum, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the pump to put the fresh oil in as well. Uh, I've got my work light because it's crappy dark in there and I've just got a spare 5 litre tub in case, I'm, in case the, the oil pump won't work and I've got to transfer from there to here using the funnel and then from this 5 litre which is possible to pour into the engines. So we're going to do all of that. Um, most of it, the back filters and the fuel filters and the air filters take minutes. Oil filter takes minutes as well. The long thing is going to be draining the oil. So I'm going to get in the engine bay, get all this set up and uh, get that draining. And then whilst that's draining, I'm going to do for some of the other filters and, and show you around. This black tub, in case you're wondering why I've got a big black tub, is to catch the diesel from when I do the diesel filter again. You'll see that in detail as I go through and do it. Um, I was going to just skip to the end, but uh, I'll actually show you each stage. I think it's probably more useful than that way. If you've got these engines, you can use it as a guide if you want. Something I forgot that we are going to do whilst we're in here as well is we are going to change the impellers. And we're going to change the supercharger oil as well. Each supercharger requires 100 millilitres of oil. And because of Volvo logic, they sell it in 250. So you're always going to have 50 mil left over which means that you're going to have to buy four of these at 50 quid each or whatever they are, ridiculous amounts of money, before you can actually use all of that 50 over. So 
it's ridiculous. Um, but welcome to Volvo Logic, it's how they make you pay the money. Right, so let's start with the easy things. The breathers at the back of the engine. Here's the old one, I've taken off already. This is a, an official Volvo pen to part. Um, this is the replica from SF filters or whatever, solutions for filtration. And I don't know if you can see in there if it's too dark, but it's basically exactly the same. Exactly the same height, exactly the same hole punchings, everything. If you look closely, this thread this on the top is ever so slightly threaded. So taken one off. Um, to take the other one off, which is over here, all it is is a case of giving it a really little and a turn, and off it comes. There you go, easy as that. Yeah, so that's that one off. So that's our two breather filters off, and to put a new one on, I'll do it this side because it'll be easier this way. So to put a new one on. Just quickly because it's been in the box a while, these uh, these ring seals have got a bit of dust on them, so I'm just licking my finger and wiping them over just to get the dust off. And then, can you see that hole there? Um, let me get my let me get a torch out, and you'll be able to see it. So, can you see that there? That is uh, that is where this filter plugs into, and yeah, it's a bit manky, but. It's a breather, so we don't actually care. It's a bit manky. So all we're going to do is we're just going to grab this, line it up with the hole, and keep twisting until it bites. There we go. On, done. Easy as that. So that's your breather's done on a KD32. And just again, I'm just licking my finger and uh, giving this seal a wipe to get dust and everything off just so we can be sure that we'll get a good seal on the top of that fitting. So, there we go. And again, I'm just gonna slide it back there, find the hole, give it a twist until it bites. Uh, once it bites, and there we go. That is your breather's done on both engines. Minute, if that. Um, so we'll put our old breathers to one side. Um, there's our oil filter, so we'll be taking that off later. Our air filter is in there, and that white thing down there is. In fact, you might be able to see it better on this engine. Look, maybe. Don't know. But there's a white thing down there. That's the fuel filter. Obviously, we're going to top up coolant in here because we're a little bit low as well. That's the oil in, and we're going to suck the oil out through there because both engines we don't have a sump. But Anyway, on with the game. So, air filter, dead easy. It just has these simple little spring clips. Pop, pop them off, one at the back and one at the front, just like that. And the air lid box comes away, like so. This is our old air, air filter, which, come on, come out. There you go. As you can see, it's a bit dirty bit sooty but it's not massively clogged up you can still see the base so a good vacuum and that'll be okay for a an oh shit spare um, normally you wouldn't keep them but the you can run like this you know there's nothing that says you can't run like that um, it's not ideal to run like that for a long time but you can do so all we're gonna do for the filters is get our new filter and this may require two hands, so let me put the uh, let me put the GoPro down for a second. Ow! Yes, I'm back in the engine bay. Yes, I am smashing my hand, head on this thing every time. So new oil filter, uh, new air filter. Just uh, take it out of its bag. Now, if you were paying attention. You'll note the way that it went into the box was with the long bit down. So it fits like that. And if you're wondering, these are, I believe, the air filters from a Volvo 240. That uh, lo loveliest of 80s, early 90s, 80s car. 
Um, so yeah, same filter. These things by man, that's the uh, part number. These were seven quid a piece, six quid, something like that. Official Volvo Penta, 35 pound. So hence why we're using different things. These uh, breathers that you've just seen me change, official Volvo Penta, I believe is about 30 quid, 35 quid. Um, these were eight quid each. So as you can imagine, we don't use official Volvo Penta gear, but everything is built to the same spec. Um, and because most of it's in vehicles that have been out for 30 or 40 years or so now, <laughs> you know, it's tried and tested. It's not like we fit in an air filter that's never been used in a production environment before or anything. So all we're going to do is we're going to push the box back in. We're going to fight with the plumbing on that. So push the box back in, get the clip over at this end, out. And then clip it at the back end. That's it, done. That's your air filter done. Um, and now we've got to do it on this side as well. Ow! Which I hope you can see. Yeah. So we're just going to do exactly the same on this side. Pop the filter off. Pull it out. There we go. And this one's actually a little bit less dirty than the other one. So this one will be a good one to keep for a spare. Now this one's less. This is actually a proper Volvo one, um, but this one's less dirty. And the reason being, the reason it's less dirty is that most of the dust in here, as you can see, comes off of the belts. So this one is sucking in air there, which has all the dust coming off these belts at the front, kind of congregates in here. Whereas this one, the belts off the front, just gets fired off over here, whilst it's sucking in clean air from the back. So middle one doesn't get as dirty. For those of you who are wondering, that's the difference. They are absolutely none. They fit perfectly inside each other. And they're exactly the same length and ply count. So there is no difference. It's going to push it into its hole. And then we'll put this one on, and that's the air filters done. So we've done our breathers and our air filters in. Well, I've been recording for nine minutes, but a lot of it's me talking, I guess. Um, so first up, we're going to do our supercharger. These are the superchargers here, and we're going to do the oil. So this is our fill point for the oil, this. And there is another bolt that you can just see there, this one here, that is the drain. So for, the, for those bolts, you will need a 14 millimeter socket. Um, and what I have is I have a couple of contraptions. So because I, I don't want the oil to go anywhere and I need to make sure I've got all 100 millilitres out, what I have is this. So it sits under here like that. I drop the nut out, the nut can fall into the funnel, it's fine. The oil runs down the blue pipe, which is just a leftover bit of the water pipe that I use for the tank, and into a water bottle. Now this is a 500 millilitre bottle and I know that roughly the first kind of two rungs, so to, to about here, that's about 100 millilitres, and then the next one is there to about another 100 millilitres. So I know that by the time I hit this divot here on the middle, that I should have both superchargers full amount of oil in there. So that's my drain. And then for refilling up to make sure that I don't overfill, I have this contraption, which is a, a big syringe, 100 millilitre mark syringe, onto a bit of silicon flexi hose. So we suck the oil up, the hose goes into the hole there, and then you squirt, and then that way you make sure you get exactly your 100 millilitres in without overfilling. So I'm going to put you guys down, um, put you on to time lapse because this might actually take me a bit of a while, it's a bit fiddly. Um, and I'm going to get that done now. I'm not only going to show you doing the one, I'm not going to show you doing the others. Um, but the important thing to remember is take the fill out first so that it can suck air into as the oil level goes down, otherwise, it's trying to suck a vacuum and the oil won't run very well easy so take the fill first which i'm going to do now so yeah be back shortly so let's just 
point you down a bit. So as you can see, we are draining out slowly. Um, what we're looking for is for that run down the side that you can just see to um, stop running, but we're not far off. It does look like we've got the uh, the bulk of the oil in our little container now, so we're not doing too bad. Yeah, it's, it's changed to a drip now rather than a run. So we are almost there. Now, this is supercharger oil, so the in, important thing to know how you know when it's knackered is the smell. It smells burnt, so as soon as I... As soon as I cracked this nut up top, you could immediately smell that um, it was burnt, but it had been in there too long. It ran too hard. So, yeah, we just uh, just timed this right, I think, for, for putting new fluid in. So that's, that's just a little drip now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that nut back in. And we're just putting the, the same original nut back in. And yes, this is going to mean I'm going to get a bit of oil on my fingers, but it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to do it all finger tight at first, and then I'll put a socket on in a minute just to give it a nip. Once I'm clear. So there we go. And there is our supercharger oil. And instead of being lovely and clean, as you can see, it's a bit brown and blacky. So, yeah, definitely need a change in. Suspect it wasn't done when the boat was... When I bought the boat and I was told it had been done. Would not surprise me that it wasn't, basically. Um, so, yeah, so... That's that supercharger done. We'll uh, quickly fill this one back up and then I will... Turn the camera off and do the other one. Because you don't want to see both of them. But where's our supercharger oil? So here's our supercharger oil. And we're just gonna get the top off. You can just do a quick smell comparison versus what came out. Yeah, and that smells absolutely like brand new. Um, you could see on the uh, on the bit of cloth as I pulled it out how brown and manky it is. And look at it; it's horrible. So yeah, this is uh, this is long overdue. So I'm just going to fill my syringe now and then top that up, and uh, yeah, I'll be back in a second. So. I've gone ahead and refilled that up, put a full syringe in there uh, and put the lid on again because this stuff is like gold dust, I don't want to spill any. So that's filled now, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take its dipstick and if you can see at the tip of the dipstick it's a bit kind of hex patterned here. So we just want to uh, see it go to that top of that hex. And yeah, so we're just going to put the dipstick in, which is the fill bolt. I'm gonna Screw it in by hand. Not going to nip it tight, just going to screw it down so it touches the bottom, so we get the full depth. Now I don't actually know if it should be screwed down or not, but I'm going to work on the basis of screwed down. I can always put more in, it's very difficult to take out an exact amount. And I don't know if you can see, but looking at that, maybe. It is perfectly at the top of the hat, uh, hatchet marks. So that is, yeah, screw it down. So yeah, there you go. That is, um, that is changing the oil on a KAD32 supercharger. So we'll just put this bolt back in full time, give it a little nip, not a big one, just a, a little one with the socket just to make sure it's tight because obviously superchargers run under, run under pressure before anyone asks i've already done the bottom one but i'm just gonna turn it and there you go no more than that just enough to nip it you don't want to break it or crush the threads or anything just needs to be nipped up so that's supercharger oil change now i'm going to go away and do the other one and then when we come back we'll see what we can do next 
So I'm taking the old dipstick out. Well, I'm taking the dipstick out, not the old one. Right. And we need to open this to get to the batteries, because we need the batteries for power. So, let's have a look. So, this battery powered thing requires connecting to the battery, positive and negative. So we're going to do that. We're then going to feed this pipe down the dipstick tube there, all the way into the sump, all the way down as far as it will go. There you go, we can hear it in the bottom, so we're just going to pull it ever so slightly back, because we don't want it sucking to the bottom. The pump will vibrate in usage, so wedging it in somewhere like there, fairly good idea. And then the waste pipe, ow, fuck! Yes, you can tell I'm back in the engine room because I'm smashing my head every five minutes. Then the waste pipe is going to go down and into here. And we're just going to wedge the pipe in there between the filter and that just to stop that from you know, coming loose. So there we go, we've got our setup. So we're just going to hook up these positive and negatives and then we're going to set it pumping. Now, oil changes. Some people insist that you should run the engine first to get it warm to make the oil easier to to suck out, um, which is kind of valid point, this is diesel oil, it's thick, it's heavy, it's sludgy, um, but what you've got to think is when you start the oil, uh, start, when you start the engine, the oil comes from the bottom and it's squirted all up the cylinders into the heads, all up here and it goes through the turbo because the turbo is old, oil cooled and it goes everywhere. So it's come up a good two, two and a half foot into the upper reaches of the engine. So when you shut the engine off, that oil doesn't miraculously all end up back in the sump. Yes, it's warm, but it's all over the engine. So if this takes, for argument's sake, 10 litres of oil, um, what you will find is that after running it, you only pull out 8 litres of oil. If you leave it overnight, the remaining 2 litres will settle down into the bottom and then suck out. So the rule of thumb when you, well, for me, the rule of thumb when you're changing oil, and this applies to cars as well as boats, is leave the engine set for about two hours after usage to let all the oil drop back down. Um, now, if you've used the boat the oil, after two hours, the oil will still be semi-warm. It won't be hot, hot, so it won't be really runny, but it might still make it a little bit quicker to pump, um, particularly if you're using one of those hand vacuum pumps that you have to pump up and suck out. Um, but because I'm using electric, I don't have that issue. So I'm just going to connect this up and set this going and uh, wait until it's done, basically. Um, and then we'll do the same on that engine. Once we've got the oil out of both of them, we'll change our oil filters and fill the oil back on. Oh, and uh, yeah, when that's the oil change done. So I'm just gonna set this going and then we'll wait for a bit. There we go, we should be on now. And now that's loud as hell. So, apart from that being the loudest thing ever, what we should see in a minute is oil start coming up that pipe. There we go. Just starting to come up now, look. Wow, that is so loud. So, that's slow as hell, that's going to take hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ass out of this engine bay, shut the hatch so I'm not deafened by this, and leave it running. It's now pumping, and I don't, you should be able to see that that hose, uh, my clear hose, the outlet hose that goes down into there, now has black stuff in it. Um, it's slowly filling up with oil, and it will slowly feed it round and slowly feed it out, so not going to be a fast job, so I'm doing this engine cold. Um, I'm very tempted, because of how slow it is, to try doing that one slightly warm, run it for 10 minutes, let it put a bit of warmth in, then leave it and try it a little bit warmer, but we'll see, we'll see. I mean, um, some people said that this takes like six hours to pull all the oil out, which seems ridiculous to me, but maybe the oil really is that sludge-like. It doesn't feel that, that heavy, but, you know, I could be wrong. I've never done this before, but anyway, 
so I'm going to close the hatch now that's all running safely and I'm just going to leave it and I will be back uh, in a few hours to give you a report on how it's doing so see you in a bit so in true form I've um, forgotten something forgot to bring something with me that I need uh, I forgot to bring my filter wrenches so taking the filter off there for the oil and the fuel filter the white one down there and then the primaries here um, yeah I've tried turning them by hand and I can't do it so all I'm going to do um, today is finish draining down the oil from both engines make sure they're empty when I come back next weekend I'll bring filter wrenches and I can uh, show you swapping the filters over and, and uh, repriming the fuel system and refilling um, refilling the oil so I'm going to have to split this video whether I want to or not. Um, in the meantime, I've changed the oil on both superchargers. I've changed the air filters. I've changed the crankcase breathers. Um, I've retopped up the coolant in the starboard engine. And I think I'm going to leave the impellers until um, next week as well. I just want to make sure that I've got all the actual mechanicals done first and then I'll do the impellers. I'm fairly sure you can do them whilst the boat is in water. We look to be above the water line, um, but I'm not 100%, so I just need to go and check with someone. Um, so hopefully I don't make a, a, a pig's ear of editing this video down and it's not an hour long or whatever. Um, but yeah, I will uh, be back next week with the uh, second half of this, where we have oil going back in the engines and new filters on and everything. Uh, until then, stay safe, everyone, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.